Hi there, you are listening to Interconnectors and I am your host Misak. In this show we explore social impact being made or at least being tried by people in different fields. We've started with people in the spaces that I have been involved with, which are tech, media, and nonprofit. But the goal is to have a dialogue with an ever expanding circle of people, whoever they are and wherever they are. And you're probably one of them, so thank you. Um, and whether you're tuning in here on radio here in Los Angeles or through a podcast app from somewhere in this corner of this beautiful earth, I want to personally welcome you and thank you for um, going on this journey with me. In the previous episodes, we spoke with Paul, who is a venture capital investor in Europe, one of the top ones. And with him, we spoke about inclusivity uh, when it comes to the entrepreneur and VC relationship and how can the VC space be more inclusive. And then we spoke with Atif, who is a semi-finalist at The Voice, the TV show, and with him we spoke about how artists can fuel change. Uh, Both amazing conversations. I definitely want you to check those out if you haven't yet. And um, as far as today's conversation, we're going to be talking with Asim Chabra, who is a film journalist um, and has been published in the New York Times, BBC, and many other publications. And we're going to chat about diversity in the uh, film and TV space here in the US, um, particularly looking into his two books that he has written. He's written three books, and we're going to look into the subjects of two of his books, uh, which are on Erfan Khan and Priyanka Chopra. Uh, two talented uh, actors who have been working here in the U.S. for a couple of years and have been in the film space way before that, of course. So uh, we're going to go ahead and kickstart by hearing about Erfan Khan's journey and why he was cast in a lot of films, uh, whereas the characters were not necessarily Indian and um, others could have been casted in his space. Uh, so let's hear it from Asim. Because of the success of Slumdog Millionaire, Irfan managed to get a manager, an agent um, in in Hollywood. And that just suddenly opened up doors for him. Now, the other thing that's very interesting is the kind of film that Irfan did in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. For big franchise films, so the Spider-Man he did. And he was in uh, Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic World. And then the other franchise film was the, uh, you know, the Dan Brown series. He was in Inferno. And in all of these films, what Hollywood has realized is that uh, often these films do even better in markets outside the United States of America, Mm -hmm. in Asia especially. And um, so they they, they have like, they'll they'll have like one European actor, they'll have one Asian actor, they'll have one Indian actor, uh, South Asian actor, because they want to reach those markets also. And every time they had to cast somebody for a South Asian actor, Irfan would be the first choice. Um, Irfan also lucked out because he also got some really good projects around that time. He got Life of Pi was mostly set in America, uh, in India, um, and then in Montreal. And Irfan played the older Pi, for instance. And obviously, Ang Lee and his casting agents were looking for the finest Indian actors. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's the circumstances were such that it became relatively not easy, but Irfan doors opened for Irfan. Right. In case of uh, Priyanka, what has been, she has been, you know, Miss World before and has kind of been exposed to the global space of media and entertainment. What was her journey uh, in terms of uh, being here in the TV shows here? And what has been an, her overall journey and interest in working with so the U.S. film industry? Priyanka's journey has been very different. I mean, first of all, Priyanka is not anywhere the caliber of an actress or the kind of performances that uh, Irfan did. Although she did some really uh, strong performances she did, gave in India also. Um, Priyanka was reaching a certain stage in her career. She was already in her early 30s or mid-30s where it becomes starts to become harder for actresses. You know, lead actors in India, when they're 50 plus, they're approaching 60, they can still get lead roles. It's very hard for actresses. It's just such a male-dominated industry, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so while Priyanka was shooting, I mean, the first thing she tried was uh, to launch a music career in America. And she had, I think, four singles. Mm-hmm. Um, 
that didn't go very well uh, she was even one of her singles was used for the um, uh, you know the NFL Thursday night football program mm-hmm. um and you know there was nothing by you know she could have been latino she could have been a puerto rican she could you know she could have been indian or whatever it was it's not like that she was being indian although there was a lot of racist comments um uh, mm-hmm. a lot of nfl fans were just very upset because usually you know they would have white blonde actresses uh, singers who would perform there um mm-hmm. her music career didn't take off and then she really lucked off because she met um this team at abc um abc um uh was looking to uh, you know they were trying to bring diversity in their television shows mm-hmm. and uh so some of the sitcoms for instance uh, already had you know people of different color and different ethnicities and different nationalities with different accents mm-hmm. um priyanka really lucked out because a she speaks english very well she's also very gorgeous looking very presentable she's very charming and so she was able to you know doors opened for her to, for meetings mm-hmm. and abc signed a contract with her and then they passed on a bunch of scripts to her and then the script that she selected was quantico which even from the very beginning you know it was a sort of a lukewarm reception the critics didn't sort of like it the first season did quite well now what's very interesting what uh, uh, priyanka and quantico is mm-hmm. so this is in 2015 the summer of 2015 and i was in new york city um standing at the sub i knew priyanka was going to be on this show that was going to start in, in september mm-hmm. i was at, uh, in a subway station waiting for a train to come and there was this big ad plastered on the walls you know they have those ads for films and television shows mm-hmm. and it said in bold letters it said quantico and it said abc and probably they had the date september 27th or whatever and then there was this large photograph of priyanka chopra you know mm-hmm. looking gorgeous i happen to be originally from india therefore i know i'm looking at this person and i'm saying oh my god that's priyanka chopra the subway station in new york city mm-hmm. you know most americans had no idea who this woman was mm-hmm. um abc took a lot of chance mm-hmm. they spent a lot of money promoting that show especially um giving her the lead role when she was not a known star in in, Amer- in, in america and hollywood at all mm-hmm. she was a star in india but nobody knew her outside india mm-hmm. unless people mm-hmm. watch bollywood films which is not a huge number so abc took a big chance with her but then what abc did was they pushed her a lot you know i, I remember right. when i was writing the uh, the book on priyanka um i spoke to a journalist who who written for new york times and a whole bunch of other publications she said you become you become like abc's property mm-hmm. and it's abc's interest that you get maximum exposure so that people will come and watch your shows uh, mm-hmm. the, the the show quantico every sunday night mm-hmm. so priyanka was being sent to all the night talk shows mm-hmm. if the industry and the mechanism would like it they can promote anyone who does have star qualities uh, regardless of their race and background so in the cases of these uh, two actors that you have studied their lives do you think it has been a uh, a string of strange uh, or not strange events just ra- uh, accidental events that got them to the stardom or has there been an opening of doors within the US film industry and media industry for people of diverse backgrounds it's a little bit of both i mean in priyanka's case it was very clear that if abc didn't have this diversity pr- uh, uh, program uh she would never the door wouldn't have opened now of course she also lucked out because she had gone to a, a very senior hollywood executives uh, party where uh, where she mm-hmm. you know she met uh, this this person who was in charge of the diversity pro- program at abc so you know so there is there is good luck there is chance uh the the there was a the condition was right mm-hmm. for an actor of Uh, indian origin but it also helped the fact that you know priyanka had all the charm and she had a star quality she'd been a star in india for long enough to you know to to present herself like a star which everybody is not necessarily ready you know the, the bollywood industry really makes you into a big star mm-hmm. so um it's a little bit of this a little bit of that uh, okay 
really. But it was a diversity program. I uh, I did not know yes. about that. Could you tell me a little bit about what the diversity program well, was? I, I, you know, I, 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 there's a, there's a, there was an Asian woman whose name is completely escaping my mind who was in charge of this diversity program at ABC, um, and they had even gotten some other uh, you know some other shows uh, they had gotten. Uh, so, what's the name of the the Latina actress uh, Sofia Varga? Her name mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Yes. She was hired under the same program, basically, and she was so good that she kept, you know, that's a show, Modern Family, right? Yes. Um, in the same way, Priyanka also was hired under the same diversity program. Um, you know, so, yes, there is a program like that, which ABC had. I don't know if the other two networks or three networks had that program or not, but ABC had that. But, again, it's not like anybody who's diverse will get hired. You have to then have the star qualities, some right. acting talent, and really enough charisma to be able to uh, woo the executives and, and right. to, you know, to walk through the door. Right. So you're thinking that the formula is there needs to be a willingness from the brands to want to feature diversity, and then there needs to be the supply. There needs to be yes. the, 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 the talent that can be that person. Yes. Sort, of, sort of a thing. Well, the question that has been kind of going around here um, in the U.S. space is that there are a lot of talents like Priyanka uh, who come from diverse backgrounds that are available. But however, due to the lack of diversity or willingness to open up to diversity is where these people are not getting their um, due share, screen share, or, uh, you know, uh, their their share of basically having an opportunity to be and do what they do best. Uh, do you find that that is now changing? Do you, when when looking at the U.S. media, do you feel that that is changing a little bit or is staying the same? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, it's definitely changing very slowly. Uh, you know, Hollywood and television, the executives are. They're very slow in making the changes. I mean, I gave examples of African American actors and Asian actors. Uh, it, it 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 really takes a while. So mm-hmm. change is happening. Um, but like you know, we don't have hundreds of Priyanka Chopras. In in the, she's the only Indian actress. I mean, there are many many other actresses, Indian American actresses, uh, you know, who've been doing television work. Uh, uh, right. There's a wonderful actress called Purna Jagannathan who was in Rami, and she was in so many other shows. Um, there are many of them, but they right. don't reach the Priyanka stage. I mean, Priyanka came with this stardom right. that sort of took her to another level. Right. right. Um, so doors are opening, but rather slowly for many people. Right, right. So you think change is basically expected, but it's going to be a very slow change. It's been slow because, you know, they, they, uh, uh, Hollywood as well as especially network television – they're not risk takers. I mean, it's very rare that somebody like ABC takes a risk on mm-hmm. an unknown face like Priyanka. They don't take risks otherwise a lot. I mean, you, right. you know, you still have shows like Friends, for instance, is one of the most popular shows that ever played. They were all white actors. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we forget they were all, they were totally white. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with white actors, but I'm just saying. Right, of course. Uh, yeah, that they, they lack diversity at, at that Yeah, time. that formula, yeah. Friends formula is still very popular. And Friends is a hugely popular show, even outside the U.S. It's very interesting that even in India, people watch it. And they have no issues that they're watching a show with just all white characters. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. In America, there's more talk about diversity because it's a country made of immigrants. And there are people of different colors and ethnicities who are very, very talented and waiting to get the opportunity. Uh, right. Alas, very few get get that opportunity. Right, 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 right. There is that. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you. Well, I uh, I, I was going to ask you a timeline. You you mentioned <laughs> African Americans and Latin Americans uh, and their sort of journey into the media space. Um, I don't know how much you look you have looked into that in terms of how long it has taken for that. What do you think that timeline may look like for Asian actors? Uh, or South Asian actors, based off of just, it's not, you know, obviously it's not a specific number, but how many years or how long do you think it will take? It's going to be a little for... faster now, because and now that we have streaming services, you know, uh, Mindy Kaling just produced a show um, with all Asian actors. Um, 
somebody like Mindy Kaling being so prominent. I mean, she rose. She was just a writer on Office, and um, you know, recently, uh, two years ago, she was in this film called. Uh, she did this film called Late Night, which was about her own experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Mindy and actually Priyanka are, are, are this talks about them being them collaborating also. Mm-hmm. So now that we have OTT platform like Net. Netflix and Amazon Prime and, and so many others, Hulu and um, right. Apple TV and everything else. There are a lot more opportunities, a mm-hmm. uh, lot more spaces. The, the space has become much bigger. Earlier, right. it was just three networks, four networks, and just Hollywood films. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's becoming a little bigger and it's going a little faster. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish it would go even faster than that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah no, that's uh, yeah the OTT space, and that's a whole different conversations of, of of what it has, how much of the old systems it has carried with itself, and how much new and experimental content they're doing. Um, obviously, you know Netflix and, and Amazon are doing great a lot of content with India original content, of course. Um, so uh, yeah, any. Uh, as we're kind of wrapping up towards the end of the show, any closing thoughts about uh, the impact um, these actors uh, or diversity can have in the industry? Any other thoughts that you may have on on diversity and inclusion or anything of that nature? I think I I, I think you know I wish we would reach a stage where we would not talk about diversity. We would just have real characters like what they look like on the streets of New York and LA and other big big markets in America, where you don't have to think like, oh, we must have like one Indian actor in every sitcom um, in the evenings, mm-hmm. uh, the nine o'clock prime show, um, because there'll be some Indians watching it. I think we are inching towards that. It's a slow process uh, because, you know, there's huge talent and even Hollywood is also you know, and, and, and television executives, they, they, they're realizing mm-hmm. that they need to uh, open up their eyes and work faster. All right, that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Thank you very much for listening in to Interconnectors with me, your host, Misak. And please, please, uh, save likes share subscribe whatever you got to do to save the episode save the show on your favorite platform uh, so you could be notified when the next one is dropped Uh, please come back and we'll see you next week with more topics and conversations on impact thank you